Imagine you are a Eurypterid, one of the prehistoric beasties on the screen here. You're feeling pretty pleased with yourself. And why wouldn't you? With your compound eyes, terrible claws, and body sizes ranging up to two and a half meters in length, you made for a deadly predator, ruling the world's waters over 240 million years ago. In the present day, you are the subject of considerable scientific interest. Paleontologists, studying the history of life, learn how you were among the first creatures on land, how you propelled an evolutionary arms race, shaping the body plans from which all modern invertebrates, including humans, are based, and, from a wider perspective, studying how Eurypterids died in the end of the Permian period teaches us what happens in a world where greenhouse gases are allowed to rise unchecked, something really relevant today. Oh, Eurypterids, what the future can learn from you. Imagine your indignation, then, when you discover that the tales you have to tell are not being heard. In the New York Times, for example, Eurypterids only feature once in the last 30 years. The same goes for so many other species with interesting and relevant stories to tell. Of course, you know who's to blame, those fatuous dinosaurs. Despite being of little scientific relevance, and no more cool than you, dinosaurs appeared hundreds of times in the paper in the same period. They even get mentioned in dozens of stories that have absolutely nothing to do with them. This is science journalism's dinomania, an unparalleled fascination with one topic that has the potential to displace other science from the news. You'd think that such a problematic phenomenon would have attracted the attention of communications researchers, and yet it goes overlooked. And why? Because over two-thirds of communication studies focus on this, the communication of just three scientific disciplines, human biology, medicine, and climatology. Almost everything else is generalized. And this is where my research comes in. Using paleontology as an example, my thesis aims to highlight the importance of acknowledging these discipline-level quirks in the way that science is reported. I am using an inductive mixed methods approach with both interviews with science and media professionals and news text analyses. I've already uncovered some interesting issues. Of course, there's dynamania, but we also see a similar bias towards early humans, one which, oddly, the scientific community has not complained about. News selection seems to be based on an atypical set of news values, one which values superlativeness and reference to elite fossils over conventional criteria like cultural proximity. At the same time, the increasing simplification of stories resonates with broader theories on the popularization of news, but calls into question recent assertions that science journalism has moved into a new age of engaged, critical, and detailed reporting. Public science engagement and public science literacy are on the decline, but they were needed now more than ever. I believe passionately in improving the communication of science, and I hope that my research will add to the wider understanding that we need to achieve this goal for the public, for paleontology, and for the Eurypterids. Thank you.